Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is P and today I'm going to be continuing my coverage of the Primitive Plus uh, Total Conversion mod for Ark Survival Evolved. So specifically I will be talking about crops and recipes as well as the various cooking stations that are specific to Primitive Plus. And there is a lot of information to cover so I'm going to try to go in an order that I think makes sense. So I'm going to start by showing you in the greenhouse here um, what the crops actually look like when mature as well as um, what some of the process items look like, which you do have to learn the engrams for. I'll also show you the cooking stations and some of the recipes that I've been able to unlock. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now we're here in the greenhouse. And um, as a correction from last episode, I think I said there were 12 or 13 crops, but there actually are 14 total crops, which are new to Primitive Plus. So I'm going to go ahead and go through each one of these now. Um, 13 of them are here in the greenhouse, but the 14th one, which is soybeans, I actually ran out of room because I didn't know that there was an extra crop to plant, so it's going to be in a different location. But I'll go ahead and show you what each crop looks like as well as what the plant inside looks like. All right, so starting over here, this is going to be the wheat plant. And this is what fresh wheat looks like. Next we have the cashew plant. These are our fresh cashews. We have sugar cane. Next we have spinach. After that we have grapes. Over here we have barley, then this is tomatoes of course, you can actually see this one does look like a tomato plant right away. Right here we have tobacco, we have sorghum. We have camellia or tea. Right here we have rice. You could barely see the rice plant in here. Then next we have lettuce. We also have coffee. And then if you give me just a sec to run over here, I will show you what soybeans look like. I have a lot of items just kind of laying around to showcase later, but I haven't unlocked everything yet, so I'm going to wait for some of these for the next episode. But this is going to be the soybean plant, and these are soybeans. Alright, so next I'm going to go ahead and cover some of the stations and items that are required in order to process the crop. So starting over here. I did show in the last episode the preserving campfire, which is basically the same as the preserving bin and vanilla arc. So it does dehydrate food and also extends the spoil timer. The preserving campfire has 20 slots and the preserving, um, I'm sorry, the smokehouse is more like the refrigerator. So this one has a much longer spoil timer and this one actually has 50 slots. So both of these will dry out the five crops that require drying. So that's uh, wheat, barley, tea, rice and tobacco. Those are the five that have dried forms. I'm going to go ahead and show you what those dried forms look like now. All right, so there's kind of a lot going on in here, but if you notice here, this is fresh barley and this is dried barley. Barley is used to make malt for um, alcoholic beverages. Then we have Fresh wheat, I actually do not have dried wheat here, but dried wheat looks the exact same as fresh wheat. We also have dried rice. We have dried tea leaves. And the last one said wheat, barley, tea, oh, tobacco. So tobacco is the only one that actually looks that different as a dried form. This one is the fresh tobacco. This is the dried tobacco. 
All right, so next we are at the um, sort of kitchen building that I made that has most of the crafting stations for cooking. There is the modern grill that I put outside by the teepee. So I'll also be showing you that, but most of the stations are actually in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through these one by one. So starting on this side, this is the fruit press. Now this one actually is used, so um, if you put sugar cane for the fresh form into the fruit press, you get a, a fresh sugar juice bucket. And once you have the fresh sugar juice bucket, you have to put that in the cauldron in order to make cane sugar. So there's multiple steps to get cane sugar. And sort of the same with grape juice, you put your grapes into the fruit press, it makes grape juice, and then you mix that with cane sugar in the fermenting barrel to make wine. And besides the fresh sugar juice bucket and the grape juice, you also do make um, juices here. So all of the berries have their own form of juice. You have tinto berry juice, stemble juice, azul berry juice, mejo berry juice, amara berry juice, and then um, tomato juice. And there also is, did I say stemble juice? Yes, I did. Okay. So yeah, all of these juices here, tomato juice also requires salt. That's why there's salt here. Um, and I also do have all of these in the smokehouse, which I will show you once we cover the stations. Then after the fruit press, this is the hand mill. So I do have a lot of non-food items in here because I use this as a mortar and pestle also. But this one is used for most of the base ingredients that you'll need for recipes. So uh, especially dried wheat is produced here, cornstarch, ground cashews, ground soybeans. Uh, those both ground cashews and ground soybeans you have to mix them with water in the cauldron to get cashew milk and soy milk also yeah you also do make salt at this station so one piece of crystal makes 15 salts salt is used in some recipes and also used in the tanning station to make leather when you mix it with hide and then over here is the cooking station. So I have a lot of leftover ingredients in here right now. But the cooking station, basically you're able to make different types of doughs, which can then be cooked. You can make tomato sauce. You'll see here tomato sauce, um, icing, which is needed for, for making cake. You can make cookie dough, pizza dough, cake batter, pancake batter, bread dough, and also biscuit batter. And of course you do have to learn all of these ingrams so it can actually add up. So um, it's kind of hard to know all these recipes and still be able to unlock the other ingrams. But I can show you since I already have uh, ingredients here, I can go ahead and show how the baking oven works. So I'm gonna go ahead and craft, if you notice here, it takes natural yeast, which is made from dried wheat and flour in the cauldron as well as a, a sack of flour. So I've made five bread doughs. I'm gonna go ahead and take those. Next station is the baker's oven. So for this one, I'll show you, bread is very easy to make, so you basically just throw the bread dough in there and light the fire, and that's gonna turn into bread loaves. If you add uh, honey to the baking oven at the same time as bread dough, you'll also get a honey baked loaf. We'll just give it a few seconds. And bread is definitely one of the easier options to bake because the other recipe, so um, biscuits and cookies, you just put the batter and the dough into the oven and they cook, but for pizza, you do have to put both pizza dough and tomato sauce, just like in real life. And then for uh, cake, you have to put cake batter and all the icing to make it. But yeah, if you see there, just made bread. So that's one bread loaf. And since I have some honey that's about to spoil anyway, I may as well show you the honey bread loaf. They look the same though. Oh, actually it's not gonna last long enough, I don't think. I can try. We'll leave that in there and that should turn into a baked honey loaf. 
Okay, and then over here is the cauldron, and this actually is required for many, many different recipes. So um, all of the jams and jellies, you have to go ahead and mix cane sugar along with the different types of berries to make jams and jellies. Um, it also uses fresh wheat, or um, I'm sorry, not fresh wheat, but the sack of flowers to make natural yeast. Um, you put dried barley in here to make a cup of malt, which is needed for the alcoholic drinks. Uh, if you put rice in here with water, it turns into cooked rice, which is needed for some recipes. So the cauldron is very important. It's needed for many, many different recipes. And then over here, we have the fermenting barrel. So I have three because I was trying some different recipes. Now the easiest thing to make is going to be wine because all you have to do is put grape juice and sugar. There also is braggot mead, but for that you need a cup of malt, which is made from barley. And then you also need 10 wild bee honey, which I think is kind of expensive. And I also have not been able to tame any bees, so I do have to actually go to the redwoods every time I want to make that recipe. So wine is definitely easier. Um, you can also make wheat beer. And then the last station for cooking, we have the modern grill. So with the modern grill, the only recipe that I found so far that has to be cooked on the grill is pancakes. If you put a pancake batter in the oven, it actually will not cook. It does have to be cooked on the grill, but it can also be used for other things, just like regular cooked meat and things. So it makes a, it has 24 slots. And that also reminds me for the cooking station, the way that some of the more complicated recipes are made is actually just putting ingredients into the cooking station. It took me a really long time to figure that out, but if you just put ingredients in that actually are compatible, they'll just automatically make a recipe. So for example, I will show you, um, I don't have any fresh poultry, so I can't show you chicken and rice, but I can show you how salad is made. So if we just come to the cooking station, I'll take everything out to make it less confusing. But if I just put the lettuce and tomatoes in there, it actually will start to craft the salad by itself. Yep, and there's salad. And all the custom recipes besides the baked goods, they do just seem to have the fork and knife um, graphic. But yeah, it's kind of hard to figure out how everything mixes together to make some of the recipes. So if you just throw a bunch of crops in there, it'll kind of just start making its own recipes. Gotta drop some of this weight. Oh, I'm still encumbered. But yeah, I believe that should be it for the actual stations that are needed to make the recipes. So we covered the juice press, hand mill, cooking station, baker's oven, the fermenting barrels, and the modern grill. I don't think there are any other required stations to make the recipes. So next thing, probably the last thing I'll cover in this video will be just going through the smokehouse and showing you some of the recipes I've already crafted. All right, so now we are back here at the smokehouse where I have a lot of the recipes that I've already crafted. So we're gonna go ahead and go through some of these. And uh, some of these I actually have not tested yet, but I know that wine and cigarettes do give specific buffs. I don't know about some of the other recipes, but I definitely will try a couple of things and see if they do anything. But yeah, starting from the top here. So I put, uh, tried to put the crop that it comes from what the process ingredients look like and then what the end ingredient looks like. So I'm gonna kind of go through these one by one. So we have cashews, that makes uh, ground cashew, which then makes cashew milk. You have soybeans, ground soybeans, soy milk. And then uh, I was very surprised if you just leave soy milk in the preserving bin or smokehouse, it turns into tofu by itself. So I guess it just eventually turns into tofu. So I have tofu. Um, Sorghum in the cauldron with sugar makes sorghum, sh sorry, sorghum syrup. And then we also have fresh tea leaves, which make dried tea bags. And then those with water in the cauldron make a cup of tea. So I believe this helps. It says, consume it to gain increased hyperthermic insulation and slow your rate of water consumption. So I'll try one of these right now. Yeah, when we drink tea, we get the little 
cup of tea buff and it says hyperthermic insulation reduced food consumption well it's cut off but I guess it's, it's decreased so that's for tea and then we have coffee beans I think coffee actually is the same thing so consuming to gain increased hyperthermic insulation and slow your rate of food consumption so I guess that's the same as tea they both last 15 minutes which is good and then we also do have fresh tobacco dry tobacco and cigarettes now cigarettes um, they reduce your hunger but increase your oxygen consumption and these actually do last for 30 minutes and it does make your oxygen go down pretty fast so I would recommend if you're gonna go in the water for any reason definitely don't do this but I'm gonna go ahead and smoke a cigarette and then you'll notice down there it says reduces hunger but it increases oxygen consumption And these actually are pretty cheap to make once you have tobacco. All you need is just the dry tobacco and uh, notes. Then we have sh fresh sugar plants. Uh, I have cane sugar in my inventory here. We have lettuce, salad, fresh barley, dried barley. And this is braggot mead, which is made from the cup of malt, which is made from barley. This one, um, I haven't actually tried it yet, so I'm gonna try this now. It says stamina recovery plus bonus melee damage. That's pretty good. All right. Then we also have dried rice, which when cooked in the cauldron with water creates cooked rice. If you mix that in the cauldron with them, um, I'm sorry, in the cooking station with fresh poultry, that turns into chicken and rice. We have tomatoes, which make tomato sauce. We have grapes, which make wine. And wine also says it increases melee damage and gains extra stamina. So it's probably the same as the braggot mead, but this one is, like I said, much easier to make because all you need is grapes and sugar. And for the wine, it says, yeah, same thing, stamina recovery, bonus melee damage. All right, my character is pretty hungry, so I'll probably go ahead and eat one of these, but um, we have fresh wheat, and I tried to kind of put all the baked goods together. So we have the baked honey loaf, baked bread loaf, biscuit, cookies, cake, pizza, and pancakes. And most of these just all say the same thing. It states your hunger and um, provides health while digesting. So I think I will try maybe pizza. So I got a little plate and knife animation down there. So it says, okay, yeah, it just says full reduces hunger. Okay, and then these are all the jams. So the jams are made by mixing the berries with water and cane sugar in the cauldron. All of these juices are made by crushing the berries in the fruit press. So every berry has its own. We have um, mejo berry jam, tinsel berry jam, azul berry jam, amar berry jam, and of course all the juices that we already went over, tinsel berry, amar berry, mejo berry, azul berry, tomato juice, and stem bowl juice. And I guess these all say they just um, restore your stamina. After that, we have just more sorghum. So I think I meant to take that out. And dried barley. But yeah, that's all of the ingredients or the recipes that I've been able to make so far. I think there actually are a lot more, but I just either haven't discovered them or maybe I just didn't have the right ingredients and the right combinations. But you can already see there's quite a variety of different recipes and some of them do give you a lot of the health benefits that things like potions or um, the normal brews that you would make in the cooking station do. So it's pretty fun just to mix them up and kind of experiment. But before I close out this video, I do want to show you, um, I know I mentioned before that when you kill birds, you get fresh poultry instead of meat like in vanilla arc there also are a couple of different types of meat as well so i think for that i actually will go out and slaughter a couple of animals
So I'll be right back with you. All right, so it's the middle of the night and I did find this Triceratops, which is very low level, level eight. I think I can take it. I might die, but I'll just respawn back at base. And I wanted to just try out one of the new weapons, or not new, but one of the Primitive Plus exclusive weapons that I haven't been able to try just yet. So I do have my flintlock pistol. I also have a Viking axe and a battle axe. So for this guy or girl, I'm going to go ahead and try out the pistol. I should probably get further away. I'll just go ahead and try it. So 175 damage. Uh oh. Okay, so it's not like a normal pistol. Okay, so only four shots. Okay, so I'm going to show you the different special meat that Triceratops drops. Alright, so in order to be able to get the special meat, you do have to use the machete, which is a Primitive Plus item. So it's unlocked at an early level. Um, if you just if you just hit the Triceratops with a normal pickaxe, you just get regular meat. But if you switch to the machete, you actually get fresh spare ribs. So with fresh spare ribs, you do cook them and they make cooked spare ribs. And I think it's, I'm not sure if it's better than prime meat for taming, but it does say this uh, excellent cut of meat was harvested using a machete. Most wild carnivores love this meat, so it's more effective than regular meat for sure, but I haven't actually used it to try to tame anything to compare it to prime meat. But yeah, for the other meat, I do need to find a Fiomia, so I will be right back with you as soon as I find one. Okay, so it's a short while later. I found this Fiomia, so I'm going to go ahead and slaughter it. I have Ebola. And for this one, I do kind of want to try out the axes, so I have... In my number two slot, I have this Viking Axe, which looks pretty cool. A hundred damage, pretty good. And then same thing as with the Triceratops, harvest it with the machete. And you get fresh fat and also fresh bacon. Now for fresh bacon, I will show you the other forms in the uh, smokehouse that I have, but you actually cannot cook fresh bacon. You have to first put it into the preserving bin or smokehouse with salt and let it turn into cured bacon. Then you can cook the cured bacon to make cooked bacon. So there's actually three steps to that one. And the other item is fresh fat. And it's extremely heavy, and I have tried combining it with some different things in the cauldron and cooking station, and it hasn't made anything, so I actually don't know if it's used in any specific recipes or if it really has any special properties, but you also can just eat it. It doesn't really do anything special. But yeah, those are the different types of meat, and just for fun, I'm going to try out this uh, battle axe on something. Got to find something. Okay, I see another Fiomia there, so I'm going to take that one out. So this is the Battle Axe, much smaller than the Viking Axe. And this one does 124 damage, so that's pretty good. Okay, and I actually did get fat and bacon with the Viking X too. All right, so I am back at base and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the last couple of things here. Um, we covered all of the crops already, but as far as the other types of meat that are Primitive Plus exclusive, I'll go ahead and cover those really quickly right now. So what I was saying before for the bacon, you actually do get fresh bacon. So this is fresh bacon. If you put it into the smokehouse or the preserving campfire with salt, then eventually it does turn into cured bacon. And then once you have cured bacon, you can throw that into whatever fire you're using to cook with, and that will turn into cooked bacon, which looks identical to cured bacon. So those are the three forms of bacon. And then also this is the uh, fresh spare ribs, which we got from the Triceratops, and the cooked spare ribs. 
And the last thing I showed in the very first video, but when you do kill a bird, instead of getting fresh meat, you actually get fresh poultry, which is cooked into uh, cooked poultry. So I think those are the three different types of meat that are different between Primitive Plus and Vanilla Arc. And with that, I believe I covered everything that I wanted to cover in this particular video. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything extremely important. I'm pretty sure there are some other recipe combinations that I probably did not uncover just yet. But certainly I hope that this was helpful to anyone playing Primitive Plus or considering playing Primitive Plus and just giving you some basic information and overview of all the crops and recipes here. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and please feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel and I will see you all on the next one. Everyone take care.